And then you can now start talking of equipping the, the, the military. Because for now, the military, in terms of equipment, does not exist. Doesn't exist? Yes, I repeat. In terms of equipment. If you take, These are very, very strong yes, words. I if mean, you take, if you, for instance, what we had before our Liberia uh, operation, to what we are having now, is less, less than 30%. So can we talk about that? Uh, some few weeks back, the Cameroonian chief of army staff came to Medugri. It was a shocker. You needed to have seen what he came with. I mean, that is just a chief of uh, army staff of the Cameroon. What do we have on ground? You know, back to the uh, uh, officers who were killed. You know, when we talk about ambush, some uh, soldiers and some other people uh, in social media, and it's a good thing that you, you're there on the ground. And some have been talking about night vision equipment that you can easily use uh, to navigate your way in, 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 in the night. And they say sometimes you just have one of such within uh, a company and sometimes it's non-existent in some others. How well uh, do we know in the importance of some of this, knowing full well that we're fighting uh, an unconventional battle that sometimes you definitely will be ambushed? Yeah, it's just because we don't have the right equipment. All major ba uh, battle tanks have night vision goggles. All major battle tanks, they have night vision goggles. And the aim is for you, point blank, no light, nothing, you should be able to see for a very long distance. Especially within the Borono area, you are comfortable if you have night goggles. Because you can see for over... In fact, I can't def definitely tell you how long you can see the distance because of the terrain, apart from the Sambisa axis. Other areas, you, you are very comfortable with night vision goggles. But I know that in the good old days, the army used to stockpile a lot of this. And I remember the president chief of army staff told me he was going to get a lot of them for the, for the men. I am sure of that. He said that. So I don't know the present stock. But the issue is, there are certain operations you must carry out, which I believe we have not been doing. We have to be aggressive. Very, very aggressive. We are not. What kind of operations are those? I'm talking of patrols. I'm talking of ambush. I'm talking of raids. We don't do that? I, if we do that, then we wouldn't be where we are today. But there's a report recently that the military are now uh, again combining other parts of Sambisa Forest? That uh, I wouldn't know, sincerely speaking. I know that uh, the Kondogas, they've been up and doing, they've been going in and coming out almost uh, every now and then. But in the general terms, I don't think uh, we are too defensive. And I don't think you can win, win a war by being on the defensive. Okay. There are two questions I wish to ask you very quickly. The first is, uh, I was going to ask you if you'll share the fears of Reverend Nicholas Oko there, who spoke about the safety of those who are returning uh, to their villages, because, you know, he, he, he was talking about how it looks like Boko Haram is regrouping, and that's the impression quite a number of Nigerians have, especially those who monitor what is going on there. Uh, he's afraid for the lives of the IDPs who are returning back uh, to their to their original uh, places of uh, places of origin, as it were. That's the first one. Do you share his fears? The second is uh, the, the the views of General Oloni Shakin, who recently visited uh, Borno State, and he talked about how there are raids in Sambisa Forest. That right now the military is re-strategizing and they're going in and out of Sambisa Forest. Are you also aware of that? Well, for the security of the returnees, I sincerely speaking share the opinion of uh, uh, Reverend Oko. I know it's on record that so many villagers had gone to their farms and never returned. They were picked from their farms by Boko Haram. In fact, between May and July, it became so rampant that people were restricted from going out of their immediate uh, environment. So for that, you are bound to have such a distance unless we put in place 
a security outfit within the communities to protect them. And as long as this thing is left to the villagers alone, I don't think they will have that security. And, and I don't think they will be able to talk about returning to their domain a secured place. But as regards the, the issue of uh, in and out of Sambisa, I, sincerely speaking, I don't know. I have to be very frank. The Air Force have been fantastic. Within the past two months or so, the Air Force have done quite well. They have done what we never expected. You know, that's one area you spoke about the last time you yes. came. You, you wanted us to have more air raids. Yes. Now the Air Force, compared to when I came here last, they are up top of the game. Average for every sorties they carry out, they destroy nothing less than four or five villages, kill over 50 hundreds of Boko Haram. Far, far more effective today. And I appreciate them, even though they don't have enough platforms, but I appreciate them for what they are doing right now.